So Tony, let's dive into the data a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we have three randomized trials. Um, we have uh, nivolumab's randomized trial, which is a pivotal trial phase three. We have cabozantinib, where you were the principal investigator, a pivotal trial, uh, uh, g obtaining its approval. And then we have a randomized phase two trial in lenvatinib everolimus that also obtained its approval in the second line setting. So kind of kind of summarize the data as you filter it through your process and then how you use that data or how you would help practicing physicians to use that data to make decisions. What are the pros and cons of each of those data sets that help them make decisions about an individual patient? Absolutely. And, you know, whatever, you know, what David said, you know, holds through to, you know, um, almost completely. But let me go through the data first by uh, the FDA approval date. So we start by the Checkmate 25. It's a phase three trial uh, of uh, nivolumab versus everolimus in patient uh, previously treated with uh, VEGF uh, TKI, uh, up to two lines of VEGF TKI. This trial showed the primary endpoint was overall survival and was met, showing a clinically relevant and statistically significant overall survival from nivolumab compared to everolimus. Progression-free survival was not statistically significant. Again, throwing this endpoint that we were used to in the era of VEGF therapy, and uh, that may not be the right endpoint with single agent uh, PD-1 inhibitor. The response rate were also higher. Interestingly enough, the drug was well tolerated, and this is a separate publication in Lancet Oncology by Dr. Sella, uh, showing clearly that the drug has a better quality of life than everolimus overall through the patient treatment. Uh, the second uh, drug that get uh, approval several months later is cabozantinib, based on the Meteor clinical trial, which had no limit on prior line of therapy as long as you had one VEGF TKI, compared again Everolimus uh, versus uh, cabozantinib. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival, and also that was met, 7.4 months versus less than four months with Everolimus. And if you look at the population of patients that we see in clinic, the one that have sunitinib, first line, and then going to second line, the progression-free survival in the subgroup for cabozantinib was a bit over nine months, 9.1 months. And the response rate were higher, and the, actually the, in an updated analysis, the trifecta was achieved, and cabozantinib uh, achieved an overall survival benefit, first TKI, compared to uh, everolimus. Uh, the side effects were quite similar to what we used with VEGF tyrosine kinase uh, inhibitor. Uh, the third uh, combination, the third um, drug that got approved is levantinib in combination with everolimus. Initially, this was a, quite a surprise for us because there has been significant effort to combine, as you know, we're oncologists, drug A, class A work, class B work, we have to combine them. So there has been significant uh, work um, from industry and from cooperative group trying to combine a TOR with a VEGF inhibitor. Sunitinib, Bevacizumab, with Temsirolimus, with Everolimus. Didn't either, didn't proceed to the next level because of toxicity, or did proceed, showed toxicity, but didn't show uh, added efficacy. But I think here the phase one of Levantinib Everolimus was very carefully dosed, and uh, Levantinib does provide, in, in addition to the VEGF receptor, FGFR inhibition. If this is also a mechanism of VEGF resistance, remains to be seen. But in this randomized phase two study, a smaller study, the combination was superior to Everolimus for also progression-free survival response rate and overall survival, and led to the drug approval. All these studies were against Everolimus, never compared head to head, and my guess is they will never be compared, you know, head to head. Why? Because these drugs, in a large part, are moving to the frontline setting, whether as single agent or as a combination. So, the, which makes it, you know, very hard to choose when a patient progress on a first line VEGF tyrosine kinase inhibitor. There is a trial now that was recently published, a randomized phase two, that compares sunitinib versus cabozantinib. 
the drug is yet, it's not approved for the first line treatment, but this smaller study that has uh, been uh, an alliance-led cooperative study showed cabozantinib in 157 study to be superior to sunitinib, but specifically in a population that had intermediate and poor risk, where we think, in addition to the VEGF blockade, inhibiting MET, XL, and other mechanism of resistance to VEGF inhibitor may provide a benefit. So the study is still has read for the progression-free survival uh, and for the response rate, and there is um, more follow-up going to happen to look at survival in general and to look at you know central review. So, so, so for your for your patients, just to put you on the line, and I'll do this for all of us. Um, absent a clinical trial availability, do you have a preferred sequence of how you approach patients in the majority of patients? Yeah, so in the absence of clinical trial and absence of comorbidities, which is very important, people that just had a heart attack, significant, you know, uh, uh, side effects from a VEGF TKI, still have their proteinuria, et cetera, uh, or let's say no autoimmune disease. So you're, you're not going to, you have equal. I think patients that are progressing somewhat fast, especially with visceral metastasis, I have done cabozantinib. And the reason for that is the small, a very low rate, 12% of PD as best response from cabozantinib. And the significant amount of tumor shrinkage that this drug uh, does have in the second line setting. And, and to me, I, I do not want to lose the battle. I want something to hold the patient, you know, quickly and effectively. You know, nivolumab, certainly for patients that uh, struggled on TKI, that there is no immediate urgency to treat, uh, that can come to clinic. I don't have the same, you know, uh, you know, what David said. I have a lot of patients that really don't want to come every two weeks to the Longwood area and don't want to also go locally that want to still come over, I find that sometimes it's hard to justify every two weeks with them. So they would like to communicate by email, you know, through the nursing, uh, but uh, for an oral therapy, like they were used to. Uh, but otherwise will be nivolumab.